I'm Javon Gordon, the only host of this show. Okay. This is my show now. Uh, yo, real quick, what's this setting on? Circle. It's on circle. Okay. It's on circle. I just needed to know. Um, my co-host, my former colleague, who I fired, <laughs> my fellow, uh, yeah, guy, who had the audacity to say fuck Eminem before the show. He don't respect the goats. How do you spell their name? Uh, yeah, you spell it like you spell XXX's name, which is Jase. <laughs> ja Mil. Uh, that's, yeah, it's okay, that. that's how you spell okay. it. We're looking up Jamila Jamil because she did something to embarrass herself. Yeah. The actress that plays the honey on The Good Place. <sighs> Trying to revelation. The joint? I'm sorry. This, you can make fun of this right here. Uh. Her background photo on Twitter is is uh, join the revolution against Shane, and then the words I weigh with a picture of Liz on one side and a uh, picture of her on the other. And what's I'm like, I weigh? Hmm? I weigh? I don't know. I think I think it's just a slogan. Like Folk. I like everybody weighs something. I guess. Uh, is that what it? Is? But I, when I look at this, yeah, it says I weigh, and I'm post. I'm looking at a, a model. Yeah, pretty much. And Lizzo. Yeah. What do you think I'm thinking? <laughs> you're thinking... What? You're thinking Lizzo should eat Jamila Jamila. Yes. Is what you're saying. <laughs> yes. Just put her out of her misery. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, like one of them big, fluffy Muppets. <laughs> uh, dog. So Get off her page, yeah. She hasn't. When did she post it? Go back. Get off her page. It's not. It wasn't. She didn't post it on Twitter. She posted it on Instagram. Oh. Okay. This is the photo. Oh. So uh, today we're talking about one of the things we're going to talk about. Um, Jamila Jamil. Is it Jamila Jamil or? It's Jamila Jamil. Okay. Jamila Jamil? Yes. Jamila Jamil. Uh, so she posted this photo up to uh, Instagram, and uh, so it's kind of the message makes sense. It's a woke. It, it's like it's a my body, my choice type. <laughs> yeah. Woke campaign picture. Yeah. Like modeling pic of her just sitting in a chair. Yeah, with her legs open. Yeah. You know, man spreading. Yeah, it's the yeah, it's symbolism. Uh, how like. It's, it's subversive body or something like yeah well so, stuff like that uh, mm-hmm. but it's about your body your choice because the phrase at the bottom of the text is uh, your uterus, uterus your choice yeah just but like at the top it says the choice is the landlords not the tenants nor the neighbors yeah and it's bad framing for this message yeah it really is also because fuck a landlord yeah <laughs> Jamila Jesus Christ this is, for you who don't know who Jamila Jamil is, she plays the character of Tatani Abjamil. Tahani. Yeah, that's what I said. You said Tatani. I said Tahani. I heard Tatani. Tahini? Shut up. Because like the... you just stopped the show in the tracks. <laughs> you're stopping the show in the tracks to be pedantic. Nothing is funny about what you're going to riff on. My, okay. <laughs> I might All slip right. of the tongue. All right. She's gonna be you doing weak puns. <laughs> and then I'm gonna destroy your laptop. <laughs> Please don't. It's its only possession. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's like the second most expensive thing I own. <laughs> yeah, after the car. <laughs> nah, my bike costs more than my car at this point. Oh, really? Yeah, my car is totaled, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's been totaled. It's on a scrap title. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, it's a lemon. Pretty much. Well, no, it's not a lemon. It used to not be a limit. Nobody, it's not gonna be a limit. I'm getting pedantic about the. Uh, you're doing it limit. again. Yeah, <laughs> it's a disease I've, with you. It's yeah, like, pretty much. You need man. to look into what you can do about this. Uh, be a better person. <laughs> oh, this book is so annoying. <laughs> is this all you learned in college? Pretty much, man. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, 
So do you remember our on... character on The Good Place is called the Hani Aljamil? Yeah, a play on her last, her last and first name. Yes, and um, that they're character practically the same name was a rich British socialite. Yeah, model. Model. Uh, what was it? she? Was a fundraiser. Was she a model? Yeah, she was a philanthropist. Philan philan rapist. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, she's a philanthropist. Yeah, and a, I don't know what, and she also like came from a privileged background. Yeah, she's her, also good at stuff, but like her sister at, was better at everything. Throwing parties. Yeah, and like fundraising and shit. Yeah, <clears throat> but her sister was better at everything. Yeah, compared to with her, especially art. Yeah, yeah, and um, now. The characters don't come from the exact same background. I don't know full the full story. Jamila Jamil's background. Yeah, I've never heard of her before. The show. I know she's so. a model. Yeah, and I an know actress. that she was a television presenter. Oh, that makes sense. In England, and a radio host and stuff. Oh, okay. Um, everyone's a radio host over there. Really? <laughs> Everyone hosts a television show and a radio show. Wait, over is there. radio not dead over there? Radio is very much alive in England. That's weird. <laughs> they do. They still do plays and shit on there. On the radio? Yeah, there's radio. There's still radio shows that aren't what? just talk shows. That's crazy. Yeah, it's very much a live medium in England. That's odd. It's Which so is so dead over here. Yeah, I wish it. I wish it were that way. Damn. Because that sounds cool as shit. Yeah, it does. Podcasts are very much popular. Over overall. Yeah. So, wish radio wasn't dead. Yeah. Very much a living medium in England. Anyways. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know the Mighty Boosh. Yeah, I know the Mighty Boosh. It started out as a radio show. Uh, nah, you know, uh, started out as a stage show and then it did radio <clears throat> shows. You know the one of the dudes from the Mighty Boosh is on a British baking show. Yeah, Great yeah. British Bake Off. Yeah, yeah, Great that's British Bake Off. Yeah, is that what it's called? That's what's called in America. It's called the Great British Baking Show. British Bake Off is what it's called in England. Wait, is it the same show or is it's it the same American? show? It's okay. just a change of title. I have no idea why America would like the Great British Baking Show. Oh, it appealed more. Um, like we know what a bake off is. Oh, we can get what a bake off is. Can we, dude? Bake. It's a competition. What do you? What else would we think it is? Are we just children that we think immediately is a jerk off joke? Yeah, is I that guess, why they change the title? I don't know. Maybe it's because the people like you. <laughs> said no, nah, I mean like America's dumb, dude. America's yeah. dumb. It's a show about baking. <laughs> like they really had to speak down to it by changing the time. It's a show about baking. It's from England, so it's a British baking show. Yeah, they even put the word British in the original British title. <laughs> so you know the nationality of the show is British. It's the Great British Bake Off. The competition. Yeah. So I don't know. It's silly. Yeah. Okay. But um. Yeah. No. No. Um. What was his name? No. Greg? Not no Coward. That's another dude. He's Noel Greg. <laughs> I'm Noel Greg. He played old Greg on the yeah. Mighty Boosh. What's uh, his name? No. I, I don't know. He's, his character is named Noel on the Mighty Boosh. What is his Noel name? Noel Watson? Let me look. He, he, he yeah. look it up. What's his name? Just book up Mighty Boosh. It's like two members of this group overall. Oh what God. the fuck happened? You know, you get one finger off on the keyboard and it just fucks everything up. Uh, Go down. Howard Moon. Bu, bu, oh, Noel Fielding. Yeah, Noel Fielding. Yeah. Damn, he looks real old for 46, man. I thought he was like in his sixties. What? He looks old. Man. He doesn't look that old. He looks pretty old. He doesn't. Have you seen him on the Great British Bake Off? I haven't watched it. No, I don't watch it. Ah, oh, dude, you gotta fucking see his ass. He man. looks old. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I'm not saying he still looks super young. He looks he real does. old. Here. Even then, he doesn't look in his sixties. Yeah. He looks pretty old. He looks like a forty-six-year-old man. Uh, I don't know, man. What a very British face. I'm not going to... Yeah. But I don't think he looks maybe, that old. Maybe it's just because he's ugly. That I think he looks older. Yeah. I don't know. Ah, huh. Dinosaur Jr. Dude, his whole thing is like... Aesthetic as a person 
is like glam rock. Yeah, but Dinosaur Jr. isn't like glam rock. I know, but, but it's like you know, it's like indie rock. Music. I know. I just I didn't anticipate it. Also, I kind of dig that sweatshirt. Okay. I, I kind of dress like Bill Fielding. You do. Realized. You do. I don't care. You have a you have better taste than him though. I, it looks like he's just going for tacky. Yeah. You have like you put a little taste into it. He doesn't um, give a shit. Yeah, he, I mean he's rich as well, so yeah, he can just buy all this ugly ass shit. People call some some woman described him as skeevy, and he does look skeevy. I'm not gonna lie. On do, I don't know what that means. I uh, just kind of creepy, kind of grody looking. This is a look though. That's tight. See that dude even thinks so. <laughs> okay, but Jamila Jamil. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, Jamila Jamil. <laughs> Um, go back to the Jamil Jamil. Um, yeah, she is. Uh, people have made fun of her. This is the first time she's done something to embarrass herself on some woke tip. Yeah, go up. Do you see this one? Uh, Jamil Jamil and Hannibal Barris shaking hands emoji, thanking landlords are cool and something to aspire to be. Yeah, yeah, go up. I want us to read this one. I know Jamil. Sorry. I know Jamila Jamil's journey to performative wokeness has been a roller coaster for us, <laughs> for us all, but this comparison of the landlord tenant in relation to that of a woman in embryo is just unreal. Yeah. For real. Yeah. She is really, really bad at this. It's insane. Uh, it's not the first time she's embarrassed herself with this woke I, shit. I really love the term performative wokeness. Is this literally the first time you've heard this? Yeah, it is. Haven't I used this phrase before? Possibly. I mean, it seems, like, easy to come up with. I just like that as a phrase. No. It's, yeah. Yeah. I'm glad it's, you know, getting... No, it's a, a general term. It's, yeah. It's used a lot. Oh, okay. But how, what else has she done? Like, what else has she, how else has she fucked up? I think she was, like, yelling about, um... Shaming somebody about body shaming a while back. Oh. I'll it's, read her apology. So, uh, crying laughing emoji? I understand that the concept of the landlord is not socialist, but it, or it's just a technical analogy to highlight the concept and laws of ownership, which we bizarrely, passionately apply to property, land, and not to a woman's body somehow, even in 2019, which is really maddening. X. I don't know. I think it's still a X bad was, analogy. Yeah. Also... I hear her voice when I was talking, but I can't. I can't do the voice well enough. No, I can't do it either. Yeah, it's a <laughs> pretty much, man. You should probably didn't use it. Yeah, just read the tweet. You oh, can't sorry, just laugh sorry, at it and just sorry. move on. Tom Jones saying, uh, "You probably shouldn't use such a shit example." Then, absolutely ridiculous tweet, and she replied, "It was technically totally accurate." Now send this energy towards fighting for pro-choice rights, sir. Make yourself useful. No, you're right. Commoditization of... Uh, wait, this is Tom Jones' response. Uh, no, you're right. Commoditization of housing. To keep an entire generation in debt and living paycheck to paycheck is no big deal. It's technically correct. That's all that matters. Uh, and now, off you go to throw the same energy to pro-choice rights. Well, uh, yeah, that was just, solved passive aggressively. <laughs> yeah, just fucking, I don't know, man. And then Tom Jones said it's not unusual for the rich to continue to defend the rich. Yeah, it's not unusual for the rich. To, I can't, I can't do it. They're from oh. the same nation too. Tom Jones. He's Welsh. What? Yeah. Nah, dude. Tom Jones is like full-blooded North Jersey. No, he's Welsh. You didn't even spell. Yeah, it right. I know, man. I know. I can't fucking. Oh, sir, how much did to put up? Yeah. No, oh, Wales. No shit. I don't know why the hell you dog was from Jersey. Oh. And he never does he speak with an accent? I, I've never heard him speak. Yeah, I've only ever heard him sing. I just knew he was Welsh. Oh, okay. Huh. Uh. You thought he was a Rat Pack dude? No, I just thought he was American. You thought he was a Rat Pack dude? No, I didn't, I didn't know that. Is that why he said Jersey? No. No, you just assumed he's German because of the way he was saying? I, I just assumed he was... He looks like a J Italian. A little bit. Um, what's his actual, like, 
What's, Ra what's his actual race? Hold on. Let me uh, do one of these. Uh, wrong thing. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Huh. Doesn't do that anymore? No shit. Okay. Huh. God damn, dude. Those gummy bears smell so good. I went to his website, didn't I? Website and Wikipedia start with a W. What's OBE mean? Order of the British, British Empire. Empire. Yeah. Huh. How do you get that? Hmm? How do you get that? You were um, uh, famous in England long enough. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. Huh. You were famous in British or Welsh or Scottish or Irish long enough. So, his parent, his dad was a coal miner, and his mom's first name was Frida. I was just trying to see if there was any other actual race. Uh, three of his grandparents were of English origin. His paternal grandfather uh, was in Ironmonger's Holier from Gloucestershire. Uh, Gl Gloucestershire. Glo Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire. Chester, don't say all that. Why? Don't say that part. Why? Because they don't say it that way. Yeah, so but it's... Gloucestershire. Just say Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire? And his paternal grandmother. Don't say the Chestershire. Mother. Don't say the Chestershire. How do you how do you Just say? Just say Gloucestershire. Gloucestershire. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, because your American pronunciation. But that's how that's not. They wouldn't say that full part. They'd yeah, say but I don't give a shit what they do. Yeah, but don't say that. Yeah, dude. You okay? You're giving me this argument. You refuse to say words like in French. Hmm? You were you refuse to say other words like we I've had this argument with you before. What words? Like other words like what other words? Uh, I can't remember. It's happened before. I just can't think of an example. So it never happened. You can't remember it. It never happened. Uh, man. How do you say uh, like Worcestershire like sauce? If you can't remember. <laughs> uh, man, please don't say that. Um, but yeah, he was pretty much just fucking. Welsh and English, man. Yeah. I thought there was something else because of his skin tone. Uh, he probably just tans. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How old is he? He's, damn, he's old. He's 80. Damn, dude. That makes sense. He's famous in the 60s. Uh, yeah, you got a point. I, <coughs> Dude, I have a trouble with like 60s and 70s culture. Um, like, I always like get them like, a little bit confused. 60s and 70s. They look similar. Makes sense. Yeah. But there is differences. Yeah, for sure. But there's like, there's so much overlap though. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people that were popular in the 60s were also popular through to the 70s. Yeah. Um, I mean, the fashions, they change. The fashion changed, the culture changed, the yeah. um, music styles that were popular changed. Yeah. But they kind of stuck around, you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. <clears throat> so. And this like, did we ever talk about the Hannibal shit? The Hannibal landlord shit? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember if we have or not. No. Well, like, um, that turned out like, I I think Hannibal is okay. I don't think he's like about you know being a big ass landlord. He just rents out his house to let people stay when he's out of town. Like, that's not that weird. Like, he's still richer than me and you. Yeah. And he should give us some money. But, you know. Also, he was MF Doom. You need to explain when you say this. I was hoping you would give me some insight on it. He, uh, so MF Doom is, like, known for, uh, I was hoping you would take over a little bit. Uh, so MF Doom's, uh, he's been known in, like, the past ten years to have... Rudely skip concerts and have celebrity guests <laughs> sub Not in Not even for him. celebrity guests. They would just sub in and like yeah. just lip sync. Well, is it even he lip sync? He would lip sync battle uh, <laughs> celebrity <laughs> guests on the show. Um, MF Doom is the uh, James Corden and <laughs> Jimmy Fallon of rap, so like alternative rappers. Uh, so he. That inspired Franco. Uh, not Franco, Ocean, Earl Sweatshirt. Oh, okay. Um, so he's known to send out decoy dooms. He send out, he, he makes clones. He has a clone factory. Yeah. He calls it, uh, he gets these clones high, calls it clone high. <laughs> I, call, I call that clone high. 
Uh, that was an underrated show. We should talk about Clone High at some point. We should do that. Eh. No. Man, that's too funny. Yeah. I mean, just, we need to be funny. Yeah. Well, talking about funny things. So, uh, actually, anymore. dude, I was listening to Doom. So, I've been getting into uh, Del the Funky Homo Sapien a little bit. Yeah. Um, the rapper. Who, by the way, isn't the Ghetto Boys. All right, let me tell you <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, you want to... Okay, right. Halloween night, I third will uh, accidentally. That's how it ended up being. Um, uh, uh, oh, yeah, you did third wheel, yeah. With Bobby and his girlfriend. Yes. And we went, and we went to go see... It was supposed to his... Um, her roommate, right? Yeah, I think so. And another friend. Yeah, we were supposed to show, but they didn't end yeah. up going. Some cat emergency Yeah. Um, came up, and I don't know what happened. To the other situation. By cat, you mean the animal or pussy? <laughs> Actual cat emergency. All right. Mm. By cat, cat, you mean the character from Victorious or? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dan Snyder gave her cat worms uh, when he fucked it, because uh, you know the cat's underage and has nice feet. Uh, so we went to go see Rocky Horror Picture Show. A, yeah. Of which I didn't know. He didn't know all the traditions. Yeah, people were throwing shit. They were throwing people, things at him. They were telling <laughs> him to shut up and stuff. They had, uh, people had rice they and didn't, toast. Yeah. I didn't know that. People were up doing the dances and shit. It was cool. I liked yeah. that shit. They actually didn't like you. That's why they're doing rice and toast. <laughs> I appreciated that shit. Y'all he was hungry. See. <laughs> <laughs> he was hungry. He was enjoying the rice and toast. They were actually putting the rice on toast in New Zealand. Yeah, I was making a sandwich. <laughs> it was a weird sandwich, and I'm going to give myself a rice and toast sandwich. Because uh, the rice isn't cooked. You put the rice between two pieces of toast. <laughs> um, y'all didn't seem, like, too enthused with it. Y'all seemed a little annoyed. Huh? Y'all seemed a little annoyed. Oh, uh, was she not into it either? Uh, she didn't seem that into it. I was down. Like, I was hyped when it happened. I was, I was, having fun. I was neutral towards it. I thought it was fun. I wish there were more people in the audience yeah. that night. Um, cause that would have been cool. I, I, I have a general aversion to group activities. Oh, just in general? <laughs> and doing them the exact way everyone else is doing them. Oh. I think that's just my natural. Oh. You ever been in a uh, flash mob? Huh? No. You ever seen a flash mob? Not really. Not in real life. Uh, I had. I think the one thing, the one group activity that I could do, maybe a protest. Yeah. Group sex. <laughs> nah. I'd be. I, okay, we shouldn't talk about that. I have a girlfriend. Yeah, uh, you gotta chill in your purr. Yeah, <laughs> she's not, and she's not on that shit. Um, so, uh. She gonna hear this one. Who? <laughs> she gonna hear this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. But what happened? What song was it by Ghetto Boys? Uh, you remember? It? it was um my mind playing tricks on me, <laughs> and you thought it was Del the Funk I was saving. You were like the most, like the, the most biggest, famous, yeah, Ghetto the Boy best, song. uh, the biggest Ghetto Boy song. The Halloween, because <laughs> it was Halloween night. Yeah, that makes sense now. Yeah, I didn't think Ghetto I Boy song, think about and that. you were like, this is Del the Homo Del the Funky Homo Sapien. Uh, so no, you were trying to show it. Like, tell me this is him. Yeah, because we had talked about him <laughs> yeah. at some point, and then you just gave me a whole bunch of shit. Uh, right in front of his girlfriend. It yeah. was hilarious. She uh, laughed. We both pointed and laughed, and I ran off with his girlfriend that night. Uh, nothing happened there. <laughs> it's okay. That's what uh, we both told him. <laughs> so, uh, my girlfriend uh, isn't the most versed in uh, hip-hop. So she didn't. She probably didn't know nah, either she way. Didn't know. Yeah. Um, but I've been listening to Della Funky Homo Sapien as well as like hieroglyphics, um, and uh, <clears throat> so I've been listening to like the Spotify radio of it, and it plays a lot of MF Doom, and I'm past that point in my life where like I want to be into MF Doom. Like I'm kind of like MF Doom's good, and I appreciate MF Doom, but I'm over it. Like at this point, like I don't give a shit what he does anymore. Like I, I'm not like I'm, I'm into the artists that I'm into. Yeah. And I've just I couldn't get into it. I I was for a little bit into MF Doom, but it's not like I don't know. 
Like, I, it's sort of like Wu Tang too. Like, I still have love for it, but it's like a. I'm past that point in my life now, you know? I'm into the sounds that I'm into. Yeah. As I age, you know? But I, uh. There's this one song that, like, always gets me, and it's Rhymes Like Dimes. And, uh. There's this part at the end where, uh. There's this other dude, like, in the booth, and he's just, like, ad libbing shit and yelling shit yeah. at the end of it. And, uh. It's always funny. Like, I laugh every single time. And, I, like, I was listening to it the other day, and it, like, made me feel real good. Um, real nostalgic, I guess. Yeah. But I have, it had been a long time since I listened to it, it and I was like, weird. Oh, It shit. gave him sexual pleasure, and he was like, how, what, what is happening? How has laughter <laughs> and sexual pleasure been uh, linked in my mind? Dude. <sighs> and pain. It was simultaneous pain, laughter, and nostalgia. You ever hear a song His like... emotions have become a tormented... <laughs> You ever heard a song that kind of, like, makes you horny? No. Really? There's only a couple. There's a few that have done it to me, and it's weird when it happens. Like what? Um. Now that I say that. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Hot dog, hot dog, (laughs) I'm making it dog. (laughs) Uh, Kids by MGMT. Uh, Kids by MGMT. Really? Makes me horny. Um, Wait. uh, I'm trying to think. Me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Paul Simon. That makes me horny. Um, Oh, is that... Is these supposed to be jokes? Yeah. Oh. (laughs) That was... (laughs) Because they're kids. And it's, like, childish. Eh. Yeah, that was the joke. Um... Those don't make me horny. I'm trying to think. There's, like, some old sexy soul songs. I'm thinking of, like... FKA Twigs, I think, probably does it. Mm. Um, can't get... Can't, can't get in there. Too, like, operatic. Yeah. Just didn't really make for me. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it, man. Yeah. I like what I like. Yeah, I know. For example, I don't pretend... I, uh... For the first time in my life, I appreciate Lana Del Rey. Oh, really? Could not get into it on every other album prior. Oh, oh, because Norman fucking Rockwell? Yeah, the song Norman fucking Rockwell oh, on really? the album Norman fucking mm-hmm. Rockwell. Is it just because it, like, affects you? Like, it makes you think about yourself? <laughs> or is that me? No, I just uh, like the sound of it. Oh, uh, okay. And also, the li- I understand what she's talking about. Yeah. Audio to Americana, my, pe- my pussy tastes like Coca-Cola shit. Yeah. It wasn't... Was it Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola? It was, I think it was... Coca-Cola. She always seemed to me more like a Pepsi kind of lady, to be honest. Why? I don't know. It's because she's dating a cop and you didn't get a blue. Uh, is she dating a cop? Yeah. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, I, just because, like, damn Pepsi it. to me is like a more American soda. I think because of the blue. You associate Pepsi as more... Coca-Cola is, like, one of the iconic images of America. Yeah, but I feel like Pepsi took the American approach. Like, they went with that whole American thing. A little more. It's just because of the colors? I think it's just because of the colors. <laughs> like, red, white, and blue? Yeah. Versus red and white? I don't know. I just... You know, they let uh, Kylie Jenner in racism. I think Mountain Dew is the most American soda. Oh, In all sure. actuality. Yeah. Uh... What's that, uh, what's that Irish soda? How that much orange they shit? Love it. What's that Irish soda? The, like, orange shit? You know what I'm talking about? Or it might be Scottish. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about? No idea. It's like a, it's a soda and it, it's orange in color. I don't remember the flavor. No uh, idea. It's, like, real sugary and shit. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah. Mountain Dew. Yo, you know what Baja Blast is, man? What? Like, you, you know of Baja Blast, yeah. of course, right? So Baja Blast is literally just Mountain Dew and Blue Powerade. That's mm. it. Mm. That's literally it. Oh, yeah, that's your foot. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I'm not going to say that on mic. Uh, dude, um, but yeah, it's literally just fucking Mountain Dew and Blue Powerade. It's unfortunate. <laughs> Here I was saying it's like this special shit. Dude, I was... <laughs> the super secret formula <laughs> yeah. that Dude, Plankton has to sneak yeah. in again. <laughs> ravioli, ravioli, give me Baja Blast Dioli. What if ravioli was the secret formula? Of... Of... Cr- crusty Crab? 
Oh, it's just all ravioli. Yeah, it's just ravioli. <laughs> <laughs> they you never a, see it, but it's, it's just putting ravioli. A, ch- a Chef Boyardee uh, <laughs> truck fell into uh, Bikini Bottom. Yeah. <laughs> and Krabs is the only one that knows its location. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or... It's, or that's what take... happened to actual Chef Boyardee. He didn't die. He just fell while fishing into the ocean, and crabs has been keeping him hostage ever since. Well, because Chef Boyardee in that universe can breathe underwater. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> of course. So he just has, crabs just, like, has him make, like, secret formulas. Yeah. Hmm. He was, he almost got found out. That's why he started the Krusty Krab, and that's the longest running gig he's had. Yeah. Um... Or it's just like the meat. And Steven Hillenberg find out about this actual real life situation and base the TV show around yeah. it. But base it around the the fry when cook. he went when he went under underwater and yeah. actually discovered the actual bikini bottom. Yes. And he saw this fry cook was a was this happy go lucky. Yeah. You know, loser, <laughs> yeah. but still just glad to be around. Yeah. Happy to be alive and have whatever he has. Yeah. His he, name was just Bob. Wow. But he just had He it. was a sponge. <laughs> yeah. So but like... Sponge Bob. Yeah. Steven Hillenberg had a friend named Bob at the time and he had to differentiate. Yeah. When he was pitching the show. <laughs> Bob this, worked at Nickelodeon as well. died. Um, uh, just like Steven Hillenberg. No. Up top. Mm. Speaking, <laughs> of, speaking of sad deaths. <clears throat> yeah. Gotta speak on uh, the goat. The legend. I don't know about the goat. The goat, the legend, uh, Juice World. Okay. Juice World did die. Juice World died two days ago? Yeah, two days about ago. About a day ago. Yeah, some shit like that. This week? He died this week? <sighs> yeah. Hiding drugs in his body from the police. Wait, wait, did he take them or did he like do the condom thing? He took them. Oh, he just took them? Yeah. Dude, that's so dumb. Yeah, it was really, it was... Was he high when he did it? I don't know what he was. Uh-huh. Cause that's stupid, man. He heard he's gonna get snitched on. I think the police or some. Oh, I thought he was at the airport. He was at the airport. <clears throat> so he was like, they yeah. were gonna search him. Yeah. He's, um, he, he's like, oh, that's 30 years. Yeah. Or something. Jesus, man. He had that many purges on him. Yeah. Why? Why would you ever have that much shit on you in the airport, man? Yeah. Like, everybody knows that. That's rookie shit. I don't know. Get a plug, man. Yeah, have a plug somewhere else. Or fucking drive, dude. If you're not leaving the States or And you're the a superstar, man. Yeah, fucking... Get someone else to do yeah. that for you. Get some fans. Actually, no, don't do that. That's how uh, What's-His-Face died. It's a little peep. Somebody gave him uh, a pill. Yeah. It turned out to be something else, right? They were, like, pressing shit and it had fentanyl in it. Yeah. Yeah, you know fentanyl's been around for, like, longer than it's been talked about. Like, fentanyl was around, like, back in the early 2000s. Mm. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, I feel real bad. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Kid he was, was 21. 21. Yeah. He was 21. And he made, he was the biggest star in emo rap. Really? The b- most mainstream star in emo rap, yeah. Hmm. I mean, was he on the radio and shit? Yeah. Really? Oh. He was I, big. I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't know how. I don't keep up with what the kids are doing. I like some of the songs. Yeah. I like, Not all of them, but, you know. I like, uh, what's the one about the heart in the bag? Robbery. Robbery? Yeah. That one's kind of tight. I had that one stuck in my head. You had a song called Lean With Me. And Rock With Me? That, that was essentially how the chorus went. Oh. Uh, it was lean, but it was about drug abuse. Oh, uh, like actual lean. Uh... Like abusing slouchy yeah. posture. Yeah. He said lean with me, plot with me, fuck Scoliosis. Up li- it went fucked up living with some bad kidneys. It was it was the chorus. Some bad kidneys? Okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Cause lean is notoriously bad for your kidneys. Yeah. Um That of a he died of a seizure. Yeah. That's all he had lyrics like um uh twenty one uh he said, fuck the 27 Club, we ain't gonna make it past 21. Damn. That was a lyric of his. <clears throat> Damn. You think there was, like, a amount of, like, you know, self-hatred? Hmm? You think, like, 
I mean, we don't talk about it, but, like, a lot of people do drugs. No, he had... Oh, him as a person? Yeah, like, was yeah, he... Yeah, he probably, uh, probably hate himself a little bit. Like, probably had some problems. It's, prob- it's in the, the lyrics in <laughs> interviews. He probably did hate himself a little bit. Yeah. Just nobody thinks to help these kids. He talked about it in interviews. He talked about, like, how mental health isn't the strongest in the black community and stuff like yeah. that. And, like, you know, it's... I mean, look at how many young rappers have died that have been really big. Yeah. Like, not even at their peak. Like, most of them are still rising. You know? Like, X would have kept going. Yeah. Um, Lil Peep. Lil Peep was, like... He wasn't even peaking, but he was, like, getting close. Yeah. They were still rising. I mean, they were really famous. I mean, it's the first one I've been sad about. Yeah. Because I was never into Lil Peep. Still don't... Can't get into Lil Peep. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, look at Mac Miller. He had peaked. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I don't know. I was never into Mac Miller. Yeah, I was So can't get into it. Yeah. But Lil... Like, or Mac Miller had, like... He had been... He had a career for about 10 years. Yeah. You know? But nobody... Also, you're looking at kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, these... Like, yeah. they're literal children. They get all this fucking money and fame. Like, yep. what the fuck are you going to do with it, man? Like, yeah. And drugs are so, like, prevalent in our culture, man. It's just, it's fucked. I don't want to see these kids dying, man. Yeah. It's sad. Like, everyone you know is on pills, man. Hmm? Like, every... Not everyone, but, like, everybody... Somebody's on pills. Snitching yourself right now? <laughs> no. Dude, I don't fuck with pills. Yeah. That shit scares the hell out of me, man. Yeah, I don't want to talk about this anymore. This is kind of boring yeah. and not funny. It's boring and sad. Yeah. Um, do you have been watching a whole bunch of wrestling videos? Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't know. Is there anything funny <laughs> you can add to that uh, uh, observation about wrestling videos? Unless you want to just start talking about wrestling. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the problem. Um, like anything interesting? I've been watching a bunch of Joey Coco Diaz shit, too. No. Yeah. That dude was... You know about Co- Joey, right? Yes. Joey Diaz. He was a, cr- like a fucking criminal, right? Like, yeah. He, some of his shit's just like... It's inspiring, almost. Like, you hear some of this shit yeah. that he pulled off, and you're just like, fuck, I could, I could do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> And, like, I already, like... Didn't he, like, kill somebody or something? Nah, he was involved in a kidnapping charge. Oh, yeah, that's it. He didn't actually kidnap somebody. Like, it wasn't, like, the movie yeah. sort of kidnapping. Like, kidnapping isn't always like that. <laughs> um, he, like, had... Uh, and, I mean, like, everybody's covered this. He's talked about it himself. He's still actually, he's close with the guy he kidnapped. Uh, It was just a legal thing. He also played the systems and shit. Got away pretty unscathed. I want to talk about this. What's up? So the movie Marriage Story just premiered on Netflix. It's a movie by Noah Baumbach, director of Squid and the Whale. Uh, What's Squid and the Whale about? It's a movie about, like, a fictionalized but semi-autobiographical story of his parents' divorce. Wait, wait, wait. That's... Is that Squid and the Whale? Yeah. Isn't his new movie about that as well? It's also about a divorce. It's not about his parents' divorce. Uh, It's about his actual divorce. It's a fictionalized portrayal of his actual divorce. Wait, what's his name? Noah Baumbach. So, okay. I'm just going to look at his stuff while you're talking about what's going on. I'm just curious. And, um... Go down. Mm. Oh, wait. Huh? What? Oh, that's who he's married to? Jennifer Jason Lee? Or he was married to her. Yeah, that's what I said. He said he's married to That's who he was. I said was. No, you didn't. You said I did. Who he I said is was. Married. Okay, maybe I misheard. Yeah. Y'all tell us. It's not, it, you know, it's not like we're uh, recording and have... You know, the capability to replay what you just said. We will not do that. But, uh, all right. Oh, 
Well, time she is was a fixed in, point. dude. She was in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Yeah, That's dude. Crazy. I I knew who Jennifer Jason Leigh was. I didn't. But does that surprise anyone? Yeah. Um, um, that's why I went, oh, that's who he's married to, because I knew who she was. See, you even say who he's married to. I said who he was. No, you said who he's married to. Uh, so, oh, he was, he, uh... Co-wrote it, yeah. Oh, I didn't know he co-wrote. He's a big collaborator with, uh... With Wes Anderson. Oh, okay. We're talking about the Life Aquatic with Steve Zizou. He doesn't have, like... He has, like... His writing style mm-hmm. is, um... Is, his subject matter is similar to Wes Anderson. They don't... They're not the same director because Wes Anderson's got the whole visual shit. Yeah. And he's kind of more flat and stage-like. Who is? Wes? Noah. Oh, you're talking about Noah at this point? Yes. Okay. He's not as cinematic a director. Really? He tells, like... He's realistic stories of people mm. is more his thing he doesn't do the artifice the fun the fun little arty shit that yeah. Wes Anderson likes to do uh, okay so uh, we're talking about the director of this movie but the movie we're talking about yes it's a marriage story <clears throat> which um what has uh what's his name in it Kylo which stars Ren. adam driver and scarlett johansson as representations official representations of uh noah bombach and jennifer jason lee i guess uh and it's a is like a they they're not the characters aren't are not exactly them yeah they are just sort well, of based on the situation the wife nicole is a former teen film actress which hits yeah, Jennifer, so she is pretty much yeah. supposed to be Jennifer Jason Leigh, like I said. Yeah. Um, and people have been playing clips of the movie, and it's a little... There's mixed reaction from mm-hmm. the audiences. Some people love it and think this is the best acting they've ever seen. Some people are like, this is... It's it's kind of like a play. Let me play a clip that's been pop, been popping up. Look up Marriage Story on, on Twitter. On Twitter? Yeah. Do I go to videos? Let's see if it pops up. <clears throat> Fuck, dude. <coughs> huh. That's weird. Let's try again. She told me put your heart in the bag and nobody, nobody gets hurt. hurt. Now I'm right of learning love. love. I'm not fast. fast. You know, it's, we actually do like the song. Yeah, it's, it's just, a good song. Uh, yeah. But also, just, he kind of sounds like that. He is, yeah. Like, j- it's heartfelt because it's real, but he's just not a good singer. It's, yeah. It's emo. Yeah. He's like... And the teenagers love it. Yeah, the teenagers love it. Which also, dude, I'm surprised it took emo rap this long to happen, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, well... No, it's actually, no, it makes perfect sense for this to be the moment for emo rap. Why? Because Why rap finally took over. Uh, okay, I guess yeah. Rap so, finally took over completely. Yeah, it's the most popular it. genre in the world. Hmm. In the world? Yeah. The whole world. You're telling me, in like Northern Scotland, rap is like probably top. Yeah. Interesting. Well, what do you think? They're actually st- they're still doing those dances? Yeah. No. Oh, here we go. Twitter is like over capacity or something is what it said. That's probably not right, but all right. So it came up. Oh, it beat Irishman. Um, yeah, the Golden Globes didn't nominate any fem- any female directors. <clears throat> is that surprising? Not really, man. Not really. It's it's sad. It's disgusting, but you know that's what we're. I don't blame the male directors though. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not their fault. They just made movies at the same time. Yeah. I mean, shit happens. Go to video, because I guess... You go to videos? Yeah. So you're saying it's like a play? Okay, you want me to... Watch this, this clip. This the clip everyone sees. Go all the way. Go full screen. Can they hear it? No, they can't. All right, pause it. I'm going to play it on my phone. Okay. So I want them to hear it. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's nothing, like, audio-wise, there's nothing I can do to make that happen.
happen with the, the means of was falling short. Life with you was joyless. You always made me aware of what I was doing wrong. How I was falling short. Life with you was joyless. Oh, oh whoa, dude, what this is a going, that's a different uh, uh, quip. Uh, it's the same quip. <clears throat> it started a little later. Uh, or it started a little it started earlier. Started earlier, yeah. Yeah. It's the same clip, man. Oh, okay. Uh it's it's an argument between Scarjo and Kylo yeah. Ren. Yeah. Um that's who I'm calling them. Yeah. From now on. Uh How? the ugly hot man. And <laughs> Yeah, uh, he's not hot, man. And the um, maybe from like the neck down, but you get to that face or he opens his fucking mouth, man. It's just And weird. the woman who can play any race, Scarlett yeah. Johansson. Yeah. She can play any race. She can, you know, take photos of her butt pretty well in the mirror behind her. Dude, I didn't see the... Oh, you didn't see him? No. That works for the people that know. Yeah. Because yeah, I got morals, you see? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think I saw him on Tumblr back in the day. I think somebody posted him on Tumblr. So I saw um, him unintentionally. I don't know. Always made me aware of what I was doing wrong. How I was falling short. Life with you was joyless. What's the thing you had to go and fuck someone else? You out? shouldn't be upset that I fucked her. You should be upset that I had a laugh with her. Do you love her? No. But she didn't hate me. You hated me. You hated me. You fucked somebody we You're going to see in a move. You just play the clip and turn the sound off. Last year. I never cheated on you. What? What is no, I'm trying to get it so over the mic a little done. more. I was a director in my 20s who came from nothing and was suddenly on the cover of fucking Time Out New York. I was hot shit and I wanted to fuck everybody and I didn't. And I loved you and I didn't want to lose you. But I'm in my 20s and I didn't want to lose that too and I kind of did. The and fuck, you wanted dude. so much, so fast. I didn't even want to get married. Fuck it. There's so much I didn't do. <laughs> oh, thanks for that. You're welcome. I can't believe I didn't know you That's all? That's all he did? That was so weak. Oh, that weird punch? Yeah. It's a weird, it's a weird a looking weak punch. punch. But yeah. I guess it kind of speaks to the character a little bit. The Also, people in the group chat on yeah. Twitter I'm in were also talking about the weakness of the punch. And yeah. I was like, I don't see anything weird about this punch. And that's I, mainly because I don't punch things for the most well, part. Yeah, but like he... One, if I was if I was a <clears throat> angry white boy teenager who punched my wall, like all the, all the boys in the chat and you, yeah. I would understand it more. But I wasn't. so here's the thing, like <laughs> it was just weak. Yeah, like he it, it wasn't as impactful, but he did it right. He did it like a way that's not gonna hurt him that much. Yeah, because um, he went uh, also the walls probably like made they probably especially sheetrock's not that fucking hard to punch through. Yeah, it's really not. Drywall isn't that hard to punch through. Um, I mean, they probably had some sort of thing. Special film wall? <laughs> yeah, or something. They will. They have to be able to replace it a yeah. handful of times. Because yeah. um, I'm sure that... He probably punched, that, punched it several times. Yeah, for the, like, you know, for takes and shit. But, He's a Marine, so it's a weird punch for a Marine. Former a Marine. Marine, yeah. Oh, that was weird. He joined the Marines shortly after 9-11. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, okay, so... Here's, here's the thing about that. You think that's a little off, but the Marines are, like, the first in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like they're The Marines the, are the biggest pussies in, of the, uh... <laughs> yeah. Of the, um, armed forces. I thought that was the, uh, Air Force. I mean, they're all pussies in general. The, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. They're are, scared. They're all, uh, little whiny babies of yeah. some sort, um, who don't deserve benefits. <laughs> They don't deserve jobs when they get back from the war. Yeah, they deserve they... to be spit on. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even deserve the markers they used to write on the cardboard signs they have to make to beg for money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they... they're just going to use it for booze. Yeah, if you give them yeah. <laughs> You know, they deserve those spikes on those park benches that they can't sleep on. <laughs> they, you know, they should just get a job and buy They deserve a to have their little, their makeshift uh, shanty towns just to sh- <laughs> They don't deserve healthcare. They don't deserve public restrooms. This is mean. This bit is mean. Yeah, we we respect the homeless. Yeah. Uh, not the not the troops, but we respect the homeless. Yeah. Once you're no longer a troop and you're homeless, you respect shit. <laughs> <laughs> um. So a lot of this is jokes. I don't want to get into. Um, so, I mean it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's kind of so this is kind of fucked up. So like, dude is saying. Like, he's trying to victimize himself for cheating yes. on her. Yeah, and I don't know. I haven't seen it. Yeah. So I don't know if uh, if Bombac is uh, 
is actually doing that in the movie, or he's being... Uh, Wait, what do you mean? Bombax doing that in the movie? What trying to defend himself. Oh, oh, or he's trying to make fun of himself. Yeah. Or he's, like, using if it. he's aware of how shitty he sounds. Yeah. Or if he is, like, like, see, I'm right. Yeah. Because it sounds like... Wait, did, who did he cheat on? Cheat on? I don't know. Did he cheat on his wife for Get a Girl Week? I don't know. Because that's who he's with now. Oh, that's who he's with now? Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Because he said someone you work with. It, she did say someone. Uh, and Greta Gerwig is an actress he's known for years. Yeah. That's who he's, that's who he's with now. Yeah. So, dude, what the fuck? Fucking goddamn Wikipedia, Wikipedia begging for needs money. Wikipedia money. Like, like they, these goddamn they're worse, veterans. They're worse than the whole... <laughs> For real though, as much as we use Wikipedia, we should donate. I'm just not. Yeah, same. Like, you know, fucking somebody else fund Wikipedia, man. Yeah. Like, I'm not, you know. But here's the thing about Wikipedia. They don't hold services back. They haven't put a paywall up. I respect them for that. Yeah. And if you have the money, fucking donate to them. But I'm not. Yeah. Um, uh, c- go down. It... It's not... Go down to his movie projects. His it's, it's probably not going to say that... Wait, his movie projects? What do you mean? Go to his filmography. This is his filmography. That's what I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see something. What are you trying to see? I'm trying to see when he started working with Get a Girl Wig. Uh, I think Francis Ha, they wrote together. Yeah. It says he co-wrote it with her. Yeah. Why, does, why do I feel like this is a movie I've heard praised for years... What? It feels like Francis I've heard Hall. about it for so much longer than I have. I didn't know it came out in 2013. Oh, yeah. I've never... I don't know anything about it. I've just seen Their it Their divorce advertised. was finalized in 2013. Oh. So. It's very possible that's where they started dating. So uh, maybe he did cheat on yeah. Jennifer with Greta Gerwig. It is very possible. Dang, why'd you have to out the kind of shitty beginning of your relationship like that? No. Hey, I, at least he's being honest yeah. about it, you know? Um, so I think it's interesting. Wait, is that? That's not. Who? That's that's Bombback, man. This is Bombback. Yes. Where my cursor is. Yeah. Oh, I thought this was Bombback. No. Okay. Bombback kind of looks like um, Danny Patel. Is that his name? Who? Uh, Abed from Community. He played Abed. What's that dude's name? Oh, <clears throat> from this far away shot, yeah. Yeah, but up close, not real. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, but in this shot, because he looks browner. Yeah, and he kind of has maybe it was just the lights, yeah. or he had the tan. What's his know. name? Huh? What's uh the actor that plays Abed? What's his name? I forgot. Danny um something. Oh, okay. So I was right about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look up community then. I mean, it's not that important. Yeah. Right. Dave Putty. David Danny Putty. Danny Putty. Yes, yeah, Danny okay. Putty. Okay. You said Dave. Danny Patel, you just Patel? thought of another Indian last name. Uh, is Patel that. an Indian last name? I think. In- I kind of thought I was just putting a P on a tell. I don't know like if he's even Indian. No, he's not. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's not Indian. Um, yo, but uh, so it sounds like he's fucking the character is like because he's like talking about how he was 20 and he blew up and like all this shit and he got success faster than he thought he would and like he's trying to blame her that she had a laugh with him is one of the things uh, the you character didn't. says explain what you mean say <clears throat> he you sh- he's saying to his wife yeah. you should be mad that I had a good time with this other woman not even that I fucked her yeah Saying that, like... It's on you, because yeah. you you not only stopped having sex with me, you stopped, like, being a joy to be around to me. Which is fucked up. Yeah, it is. Like, I mean, if somebody... It's not... <clears throat> I don't think that that is a bad reason to break up with somebody. I don't think that that is... I, I gotta find this other monologue from the movie. Okay. Laura Dern has a... So... Like, I don't think that that's a bad reason to end a relationship with somebody, but it's not a reason to cheat on somebody, you know? It's okay, even if somebody, you know, goes through a really bad bout of depression, 
it's unfair for anyone to expect their partner to stay with them like expected of them you know it's it's a thing that's you know respectable when it's done but it's not something you should expect from what somebody. are you trying to say here man <laughs> I'm, I'm saying that I'm, right now. I'm saying that like you know even if somebody uh, so the depression leap is from you know if somebody's not a joy to be around anymore it seemed that seems to be like a sign to me of someone being depressed and i'm saying that I don't know if he's talking about depression in in it. If she has depression, just kind of. Yeah, he might just mean like, you know, shit fizzles out. But that doesn't mean you cheat on somebody. That means you end the fucking relationship. Yeah, oh yeah. Like, there's no excuse for a relationship for cheating. cheating. No, no, not that you weren't (laughs) fucking me. Shit, no, no. Just end the relationship. Yeah, if you are, and if sex is the that important to you, then yeah, just end the relationship, man. And there's nothing wrong with sex being that important. No. If it's important, it's important. It yeah. doesn't have to be. It's not always yeah, the most important. Yeah, uh, depends on the two people. The two no. people <laughs> that on do the, it. It the depends people on the two human beings that do it. It depends on the people It, it depends on the two. <laughs> Dude, no. On the pair the of human that beings <laughs> that do it. That shit. <laughs> People can have throuples if they want. It depends Just on the... Just don't be an abusive piece of shit. Yeah, it, it, it depends on the two. Um, it depends it, on the people. It depends on the two. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but um, yeah, it depends on the people. It depends on... on the two. Um, <laughs> I keep trying to sneak it in uh, over you. But yeah, man, it's a uh, weird sort of... Oh, I didn't know he was involved in the Meyerowitz stories. That was that was his movie, man. Really? <laughs> yeah, he directed them. Uh, I didn't know that. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. Um, who is that? Whitney? Who? Who's that? I don't know. Look up who's in Greenberg. Uh, oh, that's Dustin Hoffman. No, Dustin Hoffman's no. short. That's not. Oh, that's Greenberg in the first place. Uh, that's Saint. Yeah, that's Stiller. Uh, get a girl away again. I don't know who the other dude is. Huh. Click on the picture, man. On the picture. Is that Whitney? No. Y'all yeah, know who that actor is. Yeah, it kind of looks like Lemmy, though. Can we agree on that? You're just saying it because of the mustache, though. Eh, facial structure. Yeah. And he's tall. How do I get out of this? Just go back. Oh, okay. Oh, that's weird, man. Why is it doing that? Maybe Wikipedia does need, does need the money. It seems like the site's glitchy as shit today. They gotta fix some stuff. Um. Maybe. Or maybe I mean, you're just not good at <laughs> Have you found the uh, the monologue you're looking for? Um, or were those not the monologues you're looking for? Oh, because Star Wars. I don't know. There's some drama on some some leftist radio show, like podcast I listen to. Yeah. What leftist? Where podcast? the host yelled at one of the other co-hosts. Oh. Oh uh, yeah, Laura Dern has a monologue. Yeah. In the movie. Yeah. Uh, Laura Dern of Twin Peaks fame. Lord, in Jurassic Park and other oh, shit. yeah, I forgot she's in Jurassic yeah. Park. Um, uh, I've of, never seen Jurassic Park. She's worked of David Lynch plenty of times. Yeah. Of Twin Peaks. If you're just naming David Lynch and Laura Dern's stuff. Eraserhead. No. She was in an Eraserhead? Okay. Uh, her, her collaborating with starts in the 80s, man. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, with uh, a Blue Valen. No, not Blue Valentine. Blue. Blue Velvet. Yeah, Blue Velvet. Uh... And then, um, what's uh, the other movie? She's not in Muhammad Drive. What's that called? Well, she's in the um, Twin Peaks movie. Firewalk with me. No, she isn't. She's not? No. Not we even? You saw the movie, man. Laura Dern wasn't in that no. show. Hmm. Jeez. Yo, for real, though? Laura Dern, she owned the double R, right? That's who Laura Dern is. In what? Twin Peaks. In in the fourth season, in in twin in the first three, first two. She wasn't in those. What? She wasn't in those. She wasn't in Twin Peaks. No. Huh. God. Damn, dude. You've seen the show. I don't know who Laura Dern is. <laughs> Look up Laura Dern, man. Man, I, I'm sorry. Oh, buddy, buddy. <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong, man? Oh, I guess I do know who Laura Dern is. Okay. 
Oh yeah, she is in Star Wars. Yeah, she was in Last Jedi. What's a What's a Wild at Heart about? It was a Lynch movie. Wait, you're with telling with me Nicolas Cage? There is a Lynch movie with Nicolas Cage. Yeah, in it? it's insane. Can we watch this? Like how when you say it's insane, what do you mean? It's weird. The movie's weird. Yeah. I mean, is it talk about? Is it? Can we talk about it? I haven't seen it before. Oh, you've never seen it? No. Oh, uh, shit. But we could see it. Yeah, we could see Ooh, it. Oh, listen, listen to this. I mean, re- let me tell you. This is what the Wikipedia says, says about... Listen to Javon read this. Yeah. <laughs> Early test screenings film, for the film did not go well. Lynch estimated that 80 people walked out of the first oh, test screening. Oh, hell yeah. And 100 <laughs> in the next. At the time it was released, the film received mixed critical reviews and was a moderate success at the U.S. box office. For whatever reason, it's <laughs> it's been it's been uh, reevaluated positively. Or I thought it said the film received mixed racial reviews at first. Hmm? Yeah, I don't know the fucking it's it's <laughs> interracial reviews. <laughs> it was the inspiration for Blacked dot com <laughs> and all the, the film's re- reception was the inspiration for Black. <laughs> Wait, so it's just that weird. Well, I mean, it's Lynch, so is it that surprising? Um, oh, Willem Dafoe's in the shit. Huh. Damn, that dude looks weird. He's dead. He oh, was he old is. as shit. Oh, okay. He was, a vo- he was a character actor that had been working since the like 40s, 50s. Oh, yeah. Damn, dude. This seems wild, and I'm kind of into it. We should watch this, man. We should try to find it. Um, oh, Cheryl Lee's in it? That's cool. Um, okay. But, uh, so, uh, have you found the monologue? Yeah. Oh, can we play that monologue? Yeah. It's about, like, uh, what's expected of women in society. Is it this? This is the, it's that monologue. Okay, I just want to see the visual. That, pause. Turn the sound off. I'm trying, dude. I don't, it's, the screen's fucked. I can't. Uh, uh, man. Uh, why? Why is it like this? Why is this doing this, man? Why is nothing working the way I want it to? Today. My whole day's been this, man. Is it this? Yes. Okay. Well, Time to sound off before you click. All right, no. Start from the beginning. Yeah. Pause. So I can play the audio. I can't. Now you're just giving it. <laughs> At this point, dude, there's not much I can do. Like you can just press that. Yeah, dude, I know. I hit, dude, I hit space, which is normally pause, and it like unmuted it. Like I don't know why Twitter doesn't work like everything else. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one. Wait, go. stop. Three, two, one, go. Please ah. stop, man. You ready? Trying to wait for this thing to work. I don't know what happened. Yeah, dude, everything's fucking up today. My whole day's been this way, man. I fucking hate it. Oh no, none of the videos are working. Great. Huh? Well, fuck me, dude. Wait one second. Let me. I'm freeze. trying. I'm waiting. <sighs> Donate to Andrew Yang is trending. Like a boss movie is trending. Have you have you heard about Like a Boss? Yeah. What is it? It's some um, it's some movie with Tiffany Haddish and uh Oh yeah. That seemed kinda good actually. It looks kinda cheesy to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems a little corny, but it's a girl boss movie, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, but Sama Hikes in it and she has big fake boobs for the joke. People don't accept mothers who Alright. Go back to the club. Yeah. Got it to work. Three, two. When you do this for real, don't ever say that. People don't accept mothers who drink too much wine and yell at their child and call him an asshole. I get it. I do it too. (laughs) We can accept an imperfect dad. Let's face it. The idea of a good father was only invented like 30 years ago. Yeah. Before that, fathers were expected to be silent and absent and unreliable and selfish. And we can all say we want them to be different. (sighs) But on some basic level, we accept them. We love them for their fallibilities, but people absolutely don't accept those same failings in mothers. We don't accept it structurally, and we don't accept it spiritually, because the basis of our 
Judeo Christian whatever is Mary, mother of Jesus, and she's perfect. She's a virgin who gives birth, unwaveringly supports her child and holds his dead body when he's gone. And the dad isn't there. He didn't even do the fucking. God is in heaven. God is the father and God didn't show up. So you have to be perfect and Charlie can be a fuck up and it doesn't matter. You will always be held to a different, higher standard. And it's fucked up, but that is the way it is. Hmm. It's a monologue. Uh, it's just the way it is. And people... Doodling, doodling, doodling. All right, I heard you, I heard you. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So somebody quote tweeted it, yeah. this clip, yeah. on uh, Twitter and said, 700 people are going to audition with this monologue and it's going to sound exactly the same as this, which sounds like an audition. It does. It does, it that does sounds sound like a, It sounds like something that somebody would audition with. Yeah. It doesn't even... It sounds like that she took it right out of... A, it sounds like she took it right out of an audi- a monologue book. Yeah, a little bit. It doesn't... It's not that great of a... It, I say that, but it kind of seems very real. Like, it seems like... Like how people talk. There's no passion in it. It doesn't really... It, it's it sounds sounds like a play I'm not saying it, it will work I feel like this movie We're, we are seeing clips you know we do need to see it in its full in the way it was meant to be seen at Maybe. least um, also the the cool girl there's some the caption of the clip yes uh, before the quote tweet that I just read yes uh, the original tweet says, Laura Dern said, cool, mon- cool girl monologue who? There's another feminist monologue from the movie Gone Girl, mm-hmm. a movie that I have seen and yes. that I love. Yeah. Let's play that. Let's play the cool girl monologue. You want them to hear it, though? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's the thing, man. Um, you can't do much about the, it. The, movie, the, the main character of Gone Girl, the yes. Gone Girl. The um, Gone Girl. Yeah. Uh, if I'm under, if I understand the plot right, she like fakes her death, right? Yeah. Okay. Kind of make her husband look like a, an asshole. <clears throat> yeah. To make him feel bad. Then Nick will I think she was trying to escape from him, and then she like she goes haywire Nick and, and kills the dude. But then we never really existed. Nick loved a girl I was pretending to be. Cool girl. Men always use that, don't they, as their defining compliment. She's a cool girl. Cool girl is hot. Cool girl is gay. Cool girl is fun. Cool girl never gets angry at her man. She only smiles in a chagrin, loving manner and then presents her mouth for fucking. She likes what he likes. So evidently, he's a vinyl hipster who loves fetish manga. <laughs> if he likes girls gone wild, she's a mall babe who talks football and endures buffalo wings at Hooters. When I met Nick Dunn, I knew he wanted a cool girl. And for him, I'll admit, I was willing to try. I wax stripped my pussy raw. I drank canned beer watching Adam Sandler movies. Mm. Made cold pizza and remained a size two. I blew it. Semi-regularly. I lived in the moment. I was fucking game. I can't say I didn't enjoy some of it. Nick teased out in me things I didn't know existed. A lightness, a humor, an ease. But I made him smarter, sharper. I inspired him to rise to my level. I forged the man of my dreams. We were happy pretending to be other people. We were the happiest couple we knew. And what's the point of being together if you're not the happiest? But Nick got lazy. He became someone I did not agree to marry. He actually expected me to love him unconditionally. Then he dragged me, penniless, to the navel of this great country and found himself a newer, younger, bouncier, cool girl. You think I'd let him destroy me and end up happier than ever? No fucking way. He doesn't get to win. Okay. I can't remember if the cool girl, uh, the cool girl monologue is, um, well, that is from yeah, Gone Girl. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and, um, I don't know if it's in the book or not. 
Mm-hmm. Gone Girl is based on a book. I yeah, haven't I read the that. book. Yeah. I haven't seen Gone Girl. Mind to be on needle in a while. In a while. I need to see it okay. again. Yeah. It's a good movie. It's a good ass movie. Yeah, but what what does the uh, monologue have to do with the Laura Dern monologue? Oh, I guess the the person was saying that that the the cool girl monologue is uh, been replaced by a Laura Dern's monologue in this movie. Hmm. I think that's a better monologue. Yeah. Even though I think both of the points of both of these monologues have been that covered. women have shitty expectations. Probably. Yeah, but I think they've been covered like twenty years ago. Yeah. I mean, like, it's been said. Like, there's nothing new about yeah. it. In, and, in either monologue. None yeah. of them are completely original. And uh, so part of me wants to say, like, you know, it's important for mainstream media to, like, show this. And I think that that's going to educate some people that weren't in the know of these things. Or it's going to give women words yeah. uh, to, you, like, uh, um, like, sort of an easy way to explain these feelings and these experiences. Um, Can you click on this real quick? Don't click one? on it. Just I want to see what it says. Uh, is that Paul Rudd? Where? In the middle. In the middle? Yeah. No, I don't think so. It could be. But also, doesn't that kind of, that kind that of looks James, like... That, that is James Corden. Oh, but it looks like Farley, right? It does, it does. I thought, I do, because I I, that's come up a whole bunch for me. Yeah. That video, the thumbnail, I swear to every single time, I'm like, it's, what? It's is that Farley? It's Corden is a Boris Johnson, the current prime minister of England. Yeah, okay. So, like, and that's you're telling Fallon, me Corbin in those wigs could play Farley. Who? Corbin in those wig, in that wig. Corden. Corden? What did I say? Corbin? Yeah, Corbin is the leader of labor in England. <laughs> oh, so I'm, like, close. No. <laughs> no, we're near close. Well, like, you know, it's still related to somebody that's British. And he's <laughs> playing a British politician. Yeah. So, you know. But also, I was thinking of Corbin Blue first. Uh, <laughs> the uh, man named after a chicken and yeah. a cheese dish. Um, so, okay. Huh. I, I, part of me wants to say that that movie is going to make more sense. Or, like, these scenes will make more sense in the movie, but it seems really dry. Like, not in a dry humor way, just like a there's nothing there kind of thing. Oh. It's not melodramatic, and it's not dramatic Wait, enough. Wait, you're talking about Red Store? Yeah. How it seems super melodramatic. Oh, really? Okay. What do you think melodramatic means? It means, to me, it means, like, playing, like, emotions, but, like, overplay, like... They don't seem overplayed. Exaggerated. They seem, they seem underacted. To me. They're not acted well. Yeah. It doesn't... To me, it seems like they're doing too much. But that's because the way... That's... But uh, it's more on the script than them. Really? Yeah. In those moments, yeah. He, he wrote this play-ass script, and he's expecting them to play. Doesn't... Which is fine for a, a play, but if it were... It sounds like a... Medi- Back in the 50s, but... It sounds like a mediocre way of... Like, tr- like it seems like somebody's trying to script the way people actually talk. But they're... I mean, that's what most screenwriters... Well, yeah, but it seems doing. like they're not doing it well. Yeah. It seems like it's not done well. Yeah. Um, do you think he's trying to get woke points? Well, um, with that monologue? With that movie. Like, the whole movie. You think he's just trying to get woke points? I don't know about woke points with the whole movie. That monologue seems like he's trying to get woke points. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. It does. It does. Yeah. Like, women have it rough. Let me put this in for the ladies. So, <laughs> the rest of this movie would be me justifying why I divorced my wife's ass. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Dude, uh... My wife... I don't think Kylo Ren's My new there. wife directed Lady Bird. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> my wife is uh, more talented than me. <laughs> She's made better movies in the last couple of years than I. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, I don't think Adam Driver is a good actor. Granted, I've only seen him in like two things. I don't know. If he's a bad actor. I don't. I don't know if he's a bad actor. He his main acting talent does seem to be tantrums, as people have said. <laughs> yeah, and that tantrum didn't look good. Cause the Kylo Ren is a angsty teen emo boy yeah pretty much and 
Also, I think Kylo Ren might ruin him. Hmm? I think Kylo Ren might ruin him as a character, or as an actor. Oh, the popularity? Yeah. And that's what people expect out of him? Yeah. It probably already has. Yeah. Also, I don't like the way he looks, man. He pisses me off. Calm down. I know. It's just, I don't know. It's Calm stupid. Down. I know it's dumb. It's very stupid. It's just, fuck him. I don't want to see him act. All right, chill. <laughs> uh, Is this like this one lady I knew who hated uh, the lady that played Peggy on Mad Men? I don't know. If it, Christina Hendricks? Is no. Is that who Peggy is? No. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about Mad Men. Look up. Look up. Uh... Uh-oh. The hates Elizabeth Moss's face. Oh. I get that. I don't, though, because she's been funny and stuff. But Elizabeth Moss, uh... She seems weird to me. Really? It's mostly because she's in real life a Scientologist. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is weird. Yeah, um, uh, take back everything I said about her. Um, Otherwise, she, she, uh, she's fine. I don't think she's a bad actress. She's a good actress, so, mm-hmm. you know, but, nothing wait. against her. She just hated this actress? She, yeah, she hated her. Mainly because of her face. No. <laughs> she didn't trust her face. I get that. Is that the same re- no. Like the same. It's the same thing. It is. It is, I guess, yeah. Not different. <laughs> yeah, his voice is weird to me, though. But I don't. It think is a weird a, deep. I don't think he's a good... He's like 6'3 and yeah. deep, wide-bodied and yeah. monster-voiced, as uh, <laughs> Dan Soder calls his deep-ass voice. Uh, he come. That's what Dan Soder calls his own deep ass voice. But no, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this movie doesn't look good though. Like, I, and it looks flat. Like, it looks. It's not cinematic. It looks like a sitcom. It looks like a bad sitcom. There were no props. He in filmed the it like a play. It looks like a. It should be just a stage. Just this. Make it, it a marriage story. Sounds better as the title of your. Just your play. Yeah. Make a play to bomb, bomb back about your divorce. Yeah. And that play won't be successful either. I'm not saying it will be successful. It's an amateur play at best. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, <clears throat> was that all you had to say about Marriage Story? Um, like, what are people saying online about it? Is it just, like fake woke or I mean the stuff I've been saying that they've been saying online such as oh. the play stuff and oh yeah it doesn't look so great honestly wait is that Jesse no it's not okay wait Who? is it it's not Jesse yeah Jesse Eisenberg's in yeah. shit okay huh um I thought Britta Phillips was going to be uh, Britta from uh, Community. Oh, man. Y'all should watch some Paul Thomas Anderson movies. I want to talk about this Paul Thomas Anderson thing, but I feel like I'm the only one that will get what I'm talking about, and you won't have any idea what I'm talking about. Are you talking about the... Uh, the Mara Wilson Paul Thomas Anderson thing. I don't see what she doesn't get about it. I kind of get what they're doing like, right. from what you showed me earlier. The uh, scenes me, we you showed me earlier, but uh, actress Mara Wilson, who's now a journalist. Oh, she's a journalist now. Or something like that, a writer. Oh, okay, some sort of writer. Yeah. Uh, you know, from Matilda and all that. Yeah, Matilda. Uh, she, mm. mo- I, I mainly know her these days for being annoying on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she um, tweeted, "I'm pretty sure I'm either too dumb to understand Paul Thomas and." Sin sitting movies, or a lot of people are pretending to understand and like them when they really don't. I do hate that part though. Another guy in the comments agreed with me that mm-hmm. I do hate when people say people are pretending to like something I don't get. Mm-hmm. No, you just don't get it. Yeah, I don't. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of The Office, but I they're not <laughs> pretending to like it. They love that shit. I there just, there are people that bandwagon it. Yeah, I'm not gonna. But that's with everything that yeah. becomes popular. Um, I mean, and people aren't pretending to love friends. When they love friends, yeah, they love friends. It's pitiful. I don't get it, and I pity them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I it's, pity <laughs> them. I get it. I get how it's appealing. Yeah. It's just that your life is formulaic. And <laughs> You're a <they're>, normie? 
<laughs> they're in making day, decisions for you. I will bring in an AK for <laughs> Has anybody, has any school shooter, like, called them normies yet? <laughs> On 4chan beforehand, probably. Oh, I don't know. Okay, all right. <laughs> Not while they're doing it. You're a normie. <laughs> You're a normie. <laughs> Well, then again, they're not doing they're not gu- doing guns like that anymore. They all got oh, guns. Like, yeah, they're all just killing them in like five seconds of in seeing them. Yeah, pretty soon it's just gonna be like rocket launchers and shit. Yeah, you know, it's gonna be just blowing up schools. Yeah, killing everyone. It's gonna they're gonna be Dano snapping people out of existence. <laughs> They're gonna they get all the in, the Infinity Gauntlet. And just <laughs> they're gonna be in welding class working on a power glove yeah. situation. They're just gonna lug around a big ass fist. Yeah, shit's gonna suck. <laughs> Limp arm. Um, they have to throw. And this how she continued the rest of it. Yeah. He said possibly both, probably both. I think it's possible that his movies aren't really made to be understood. They're made to be experienced. They're mostly visual and emotional. Attempting to analyze them would just make you more frustrated, which is hopeless. Problem which is a hopeless pragmatic is just frustrating to me. What do you mean you can't analyze it? Like, uh, They're made to be... Ex- I, I get that, but also aren't all films made to be experienced? They are, yeah. And his movies are both visual and emotional. They're all gorgeous looking yeah. movies. And, and the, all, most of them are very emotional. Yeah. Which to me makes it perfect to analyze. Yeah. Also, I don't think it's hard. You can analyze them. You can analyze anything, man. Like, I understand there will be blood. I don't... It's not that hard to understand. Yeah. And there's a message in there about... it. This is at the very beginning of American capitalism. Mm -hmm. It was like the shitty American... Yeah. He's an oil baron. Like Rockefeller. Yeah. Um, Like, literally, like Rockefeller. Uh, Yeah. It's not like... It's not like... Uh, Citizen Kane who just made it you know but it is similar yeah um Punch Drunk Love I don't I, I, do you think she's looking for like concrete messages cause I understand um from the master like I don't necessarily get the message and it doesn't seem like a movie that has a message I think it's just trying to tell a story there's a message. What's the message? I feel like it's a story about a toxic bromance between two dudes that aren't really good to me. Yeah. That's how I viewed it. That aren't really good for anybody. Yeah. Not each other. They're both very broken in some way. Mm-hmm. Especially Quill. Uh, and it just doesn't work out. Because the, over the course of the movie, they come together. They're friends for a while. That falls apart. They go their separate ways. That's literally how it goes. Mm-hmm. And neither character really changes, and they just continue on their shitty path of life that they were yeah. already doing. But the message is more of an example of shittiness than it is outright. Don't do this because there's no repercussions. It's not. It's not about repercussions. Okay. I what's, mean, what's the I'm message? talking about the master, not there will be blood. Yeah. Like, what's the message of the master? I don't think there is a message. I yeah. Mean, it's I more think. of a portrayal. Or a... Just, exa- yeah, just showing these characters. Yeah, it's... Which are probably extremely relatable. Yeah. Or, I mean, or like, very... Alcoholic messes can yeah. probably relate to a character like Quill. Yeah. And people with broken that, romances and people that have experienced people in their life that are just broken alcoholic messes or drug addicted messes and shit. Yeah. Um, just shit people. Like not people, shit people. Not shit people, Calm but down. people that <laughs> act shittily and yeah. have bad circumstances to lead them to be the person they are. She also said, like, I've had people give good analysis of Scorsese or Spike Lee or Coen Brothers movies that explains what it is that's so structurally impressive about them. Nobody's ever been able to do that with a PTA movie for me. It's more just like it was pretty and made me feel. What does she mean structural? Like, like what is... How the movies are structured. <clears throat> it seems like she's... So, okay. So, I think that there are 
movies that are structural that tell a story within a structure and they're structured in a way that makes you're getting story... really hung up on the term structural it yeah, is not that yeah. much on the word structural <laughs> but it's like a, a means of the movie is structured and it's structured with a structure and construction paper and stru- <laughs> <laughs> that movie struck me with it's structural structure. I was struck in by it's structure <laughs> Wait, what song is that? I don't know. <laughs> blinding me with science. Just... It is blinding me with science. <laughs> okay, so... Um, okay, so I understand how, like, there are movies that tell a story in a way that's really enticing. But there's also something to be said about stories that go in a chronological order. That go... That, like, develop. Where I feel like... There are certain scenes. He's never done a non chrono It's not Scorsese. It's not Tarantino. He's never done a non chronological movie. You're talking about Scorsese. Hmm. No, about Scorsese. I, I messed up. I was I was talking about Tarantino. I was saying, PTA has never made a movie like Tarantino. Yeah. He doesn't do the whole non chronological. All his movies are linear. Yeah, but like, there's also a difference between, like, you can understand parts of a story about a character when that character's not in a scene. You know what I'm saying? There are... She even said... Okay. She's even like talking about how she's from the same area as Paul Thomas Anderson, which he said a lot of his movies. Mm-hmm. Like Boogie Nights and Magnolia and uh, Master Set in California as well. And... Uh, what else? And I'm... Actually, what? where is There Will Be Blood Set... I don't know. Um. <clears throat> but, like, Paul Thomas Anderson is from the San Fernando Valley. Yeah. His father was, like, a local TV host in that area as well. Hmm. Yeah, it was also set... Uh, there Will Be Blood is also set in Southern California. Okay. Um. So what is she saying? This lady, this lady who's not Mara Wilson, says, in my... It might be because all of his movies' protagonists are socially incapable men with fragile egos. Not all of his movies. I hate when they say shit like it. Yeah, but it's a lot of, like, a handful He's of done, his movies. Yeah, yeah, like that. Hmm. Like, there would be blood in the master, and a couple of the main, ca- and a couple of the main characters in um. In Magnolia, which is a movie with multiple protagonists, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, are socially capable of man with fragile egos. Hmm. All right, this dude said, uh, There Will Be Blood is a character study of literally no character development, but I, but I have still absolutely love, love it. I think it's largely a tone thing. I find myself friends fixed by it. It's my most rewatched movie. I love Phantom Thread too, but that movie has like an arc. Hmm. Uh, there is an arc in, there, in Phantom Thread. I forgot to mention Phantom Thread, didn't I? Maybe. Go up. Damn, he directed all their music videos? Recently? Who? Who? All of Himes. Huh? I knew he directed some of them. I didn't know all of them. That's like a lot, all, yeah. Like all of the ones they, they've released. In the past three, three years. years. Yeah. I know that. That is odd. What if, I, what if he just stops directing? <laughs> Just go straight to... I just direct time music videos. <laughs> Nobody... I don't direct for anybody else. Besides just time. time. <laughs> uh, ah, he directed Saturday Night Live. What? Once. He did an episode. Oh, he did a segment. Yeah. In like 2000. Also... Oh, he did... Uh, he did... Wait, Cigarettes and Coffee is a short film? That's oh. another movie oh, called so- Cigarettes and Coffee that he made. It's not the cigarettes and coffee I know. No. Okay. Um, oh, it's coffee and cigarettes. Yeah. Is the yes. movie I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's that's just a, that's just not that weird a title. Some people use yeah, it, <laughs> but it's just flip flopped. Yeah. Um, Phantom Dread is a movie about like this. Uh, about what? Uh, this like fashion designer and like the. Oh yeah, yeah I remember that. In the I remember 50s that. Fifties who enters mm-hmm. a, and he's like a, 
extremely controlling and he enters yeah. a relationship with this model and tries to control her, but mm-hmm. they end up uh, both being a little sociopathic and end up in a weird relationship at the end of the movie. Mm-hmm. Where the end of the movie has her poisoning him a little bit and him being fine with it. <laughs> and I guess that's just how it's going to be. <laughs> uh, it's a weird movie. So, uh, but what is, what is um, Matilda saying about being from the same area? Oh, she just says that she thought she would be able to pick to um like it because of that mm-hmm. but she still doesn't get his thing despite the fact that they're from the same area and the fact that the live movies are set in the same area <clears throat> still doesn't get what he's going for like they're both from Southern California and she yeah, thought that yeah, would yeah. mean that they, they, they at least have some similar understanding of yeah from upbringing and shit uh, and she said this about there will be blood but I feel like it's a character study for really shallow characters not much to him besides greed and rage and then Blank and Patch comes into it. Blank and Patch is all over this thread. <laughs> he says, some people are just greed and rage and don't have arcs of redemption. And that's yeah. true. Yeah. And that's the point. Like, do you think she's just expecting it to fit in some convention? I'm going to read the rest. Okay. She follows, I don't need redemption. And the dude comes in, oh man, my king. No, he's making a joke. I'm sorry. Uh, is it funny? Uh, no. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, I don't need redemption, but I need some kind of change or exploration or explanation. No, you don't. Um, uh, there is exploration. It's an exploration of his greed and rage and what it causes him to do. Yeah. I don't. I. I. It explores. Yeah. There will be blood. Explores what what that being a person fueled by your greed and your rage and hatred of other people. Like, he gives a whole, like, mini monologue in the movie where he tells his guy that he thinks is his brother, uh, um, uh, he says, there's a competition in me. I don't want anyone else to succeed. He says that. You can look. Yeah. See if you can find this clip. Look up, uh, there's a competition in me. Uh, Mm -hmm. There will be blood. I don't know if that'll find it, but. This? Yeah. Oh. Well, actually, pause it. Because I'm going to find it on YouTube. Okay. Um, why does she feel like she needs that? You don't need that. What? You don't need that in a movie, necessarily. <laughs> for things to happen <laughs> yeah like I don't think you have to I don't think a movie has to fit an arc I don't think the movie like you're supposed to just experience maybe she just doesn't, <laughs> she just didn't see the arc and she's wrong <laughs> I disagree there is I mean uh, uh, there is an arc mm. it's how he got worse yeah there is exploration it's, it's him an exploration worse. yeah it's him getting worse and what a person who was fueled by that from the beginning to the end yeah and <laughs> what is like <coughs> this is an ad yeah oh, okay. that's actually the Big Bang Fury <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have a competition play the uh, thing hold on it's a gorgeous movie dude you should really watch it mm-hmm. it is three hours long though. <laughs> yeah Two two forty. All right. Yep. Pass. You said play it. You didn't play it. Okay. So. All right. And now let's play. I have a competition. In oh, that's good. Yeah. We got that one perfect. I want no one else to succeed. High five. <laughs> that was weak. Yeah. I hate most people. That part of Same. me is gone. Working and not succeeding. All my uh, failures has left me. Uh, I just don't care. Well, if it's in me, it's in you. There are times when I 
I look at people and I see nothing worth liking. I want to earn enough money I can get away from everyone. What will you do about your boy? your sound come back to you i don't know maybe no one knows that doctor might not know that where's his mother i don't want to talk about those things i see the worst in people henry i don't need to look past seeing them to get all i need built up my hatreds over the years, little by little. Having you here gives me a second breath. I, I can't keep doing this on my own. With these um, people. He later finds out that dude's not his brother and kills him, but... <laughs> Shit. Um, He's just a scammer, but... That that makes total sense to me. Yeah, that's exploration. Yeah, like, it's a... That's him straight up stating his philosophy on life. Yeah. Like, that's... And I think what you're meant to do is try to wrap your head around how somebody can think this way. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's something most people couldn't sort of bring themselves to understand. Like, it's... A way people couldn't be. Most people can't be that way. Most people, uh, not, most people aren't. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But there are plenty of them. Yeah, yeah, you got a point. Like, I, I honestly think that's how a lot of the 1% is. Oh, I yeah. think there's a bit of Daniel Plainview and Donald Trump. Yeah. I don't know if just... Is it? It's more infant. If it's probably more like genuinely infantile. Yeah, he's like, not that smart. Like a childish, because he is, bad he's always good. been this way. Yeah. yeah. He, he comes from money. Yeah. So his concern for other people has <clears throat> never been there. Never been really truly developed. <laughs> yeah. So about this, do you think that there is inherent in in the, capitalism, there's, there's inherent. No, 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 no. Let, uh, me, let me get this full one out. <clears throat> Do you think that there's inherent within his not looking past people's, the worst in people? Yeah. Do you think that there's an inherent, uh, like, self-righteousness? Like, an inherent, like, I am the best. Yeah. I am better yes. than. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> So that to make him one of the best like film characters. <laughs> okay. So it's there's a understandable character philosophy and Yeah. And I think that he's also acted like a motherfucker. <gasps> acted so well. I don't understand what she doesn't get. It seems like she tuned out this movie. Because, I mean, just from that scene, you know, I'm Maybe capable. some women... I, I see this a lot with women on Twitter. Uh-huh. I'm, just, I'm not using this as a criticism. I just think that some women just... This is an observation. More yeah. So. Just uh, don't really... Are so annoyed of men in real life that they're not really fucking with movies, even <clears> about <throat> shitty men. They're not really fucking with them. <laughs> like, they don't want to see it because they see it. Yeah. Constantly. And so... Because as men, we look at it as a, oh, I'm not that. I don't want to be that. Yeah. And it's something that we more easily can be than yeah. women. Maybe. It's, I'm just saying. This yeah. This is what I think. <clears throat> I don't even think that that's like, I don't think that that's wrong to yeah. do. I, I can quite understand that. Yeah. You know, I mean, these character portrayals, like, this might be a really good version of it. But I this, think it's one of the best movies of the century so far but but there's also like 
Sorry. Um, I think there's also like a lot of that having been done already. You know what I'm saying? It's also based on shit in real life, like yeah. you know, not this type. This not a person, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. this type of person. Mm-hmm. You know. Also, I just observed my my film taste. Yeah. Wolf of Wall Street is also on my list of my favorite like movies released this century so far. Yeah. Both movies essentially cover the same shit. One's a little more comedic. Yeah. Like, essentially about greed. Yeah. Both movies are about greed. And both are like three hours long as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that... Uh... <laughs> Not only is it greed, but I think it's a different situation yeah. in Wolf of Wall Street. I think it's a, a yuppie that capitalized on something that was there. It's the same thing. Not a yuppie, but it's it's just different. It's it's pretty much the same thing. It's different historical eras. and Yeah, but I think that that's a, more of a pioneer thing. That's more of a industrial, like an industrious man. He did it for money, man. Well, yeah, he did it for money, but he was the movie isn't praising him for founding things they're, yeah, no. they're saying he's a but I'm saying Jordan Belcher Belfort Jordan Belfort is a um, he's exploiting a system yes whereas I think Dude and There Will Be Blood is capitalizing off of an industry and is capitalizing off of he also exploited people in this movie oh, okay. he exploited an entire town in this movie okay well okay so Jordan Belfort exploits a flaw in a system he more explicitly exploits people exploits like I mean he used uh, he did ultimately he both did love the boy <clears throat> mm-hmm that dude who died at the beginning of the movie, son. Yeah. Who he was initially just going to use as a tool to present himself as a family man, but he ultimately did love him. Yeah. Because he did raise him. Mm-hmm. But the man doesn't. But love even him. by the end of the movie, he <clears throat> can't. He don't love anybody for real. Because the end of the movie, he goes on a "You're a bastard from a basket. You're a bastard from a basket." Mm. Like, it's the last words he says to him, but he can't hear him because he's deaf by the end of the movie. Yeah. That's, this scene right here is that scene of him going deaf. Yeah. It's one of the most beautifully shot movies in the, seen in the movie. <coughs> so, huh. I do think you you have something there, um, talking about women and not wanting to sort of explore these characters because they're sick of dealing with it in real life. Yeah, and even some men... Just some people don't want to see shitty mel- shitty human behavior in movies. Yeah, but especially shitty men. Yeah. Because we don't have that much representation of, like, shitty women besides them being... Eh, there is some. There is some. Yeah, there's some, but not as much. And if they're in... A lot of what could be lumped into that is women behaving as men think they should not, rather than them being shit people. You know what I'm saying? I have no, I have no problem personally. But women's lives are dominated by their shitty men. Yeah. More often than 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 men's lives are dominated by uh, shitty women. Yeah. Though that does happen in some men's lives. In some cases, it yeah. Can, yeah. It just statistically, it's more way likely less. to happen to women. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that gives women every right to just not be into this. Yeah. It's like <clears throat> this is like not wanting to watch MMA. Or, like, some other shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, because of the violence? Yeah. I was about to say. <laughs> well, like... I was confused. It's a rough example, but it's like, they don't want to watch the shit that men are into because they deal with the shit that men are into all the time. It's kind of forced on them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I... If I was a woman, like, I could definitely... And I experienced shitty men in my life, I wouldn't want to see that represented all the time yeah even if it's condemning it's such a like reflection of real life that it becomes unnecessary because it's lived every day you know what I'm saying yeah um hmm. and maybe it's that 
for her. Maybe it is like a distaste for this character's existence rather than a not getting it or not seeing the appeal of it. Let me say, I found a, a part of the thread where uh, okay. the guy talks about, okay, this guy says, I don't understand most of them, but there, there would be blood as a work of art and a compelling critique of capitalism. It's also an hour too long. Mm. Uh, maybe. Uh, though, actually, <laughs> he has said that Magnolia is an hour too long. <coughs> well, Who? On PTA? The, yeah, on WTF, on his WTF interview. Yeah. Which is one of my favorite interviews, because... Because he got Marin to do a little improv in it. Really? But then Marin was like, nah, I'm not doing that. And, and it seemed like PTA wanted him to continue. And I was like, PTA, go on Comedy Bang Bang. I would love that. <laughs> I would love if he was on Comedy Bang Bang with a bunch of people doing improv. Mm. I don't know if he would love it or not. Yeah. Wait, yeah, he's married to a comedian. Oh. Uh, Maya Rudolph. What? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. He's married to Maya Rudolph. That makes sense why uh, Maya Rudolph. That's why he would enjoy somebody doing the silly little bit or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, it is a, like a critique on capitalism, but like, I don't know, man. And then her response to that is, um, yeah, I don't know. It came out in 2007. I think that oil man are corrupt was exactly the most earth shaking revelation four years into a war started by oil executives. Here's my thing about that. Mm-hmm. I stand by Roger Ebert, what Roger Ebert said a long time ago, which is it doesn't matter what a movie's about, it's how it's about it. Yeah. It depends on how you depict it. I don't need the message to be new. I need you to tell the message to me in a new way. Yeah. So that's, no. It's no. No, it's not revolutionary that oil men are corrupt. Mm-hmm. At what being the message. <clears throat> but it's a major depiction. But it's of a man, of a, a character, a very interesting, very well made, well well portrayed, yeah. well shot portrayal of that message of the message that oil, oil men are corrupt. Also, I think that you know the historic, like the historical side of it, needs to be represented as well. Because I mean, we didn't get taught about how shitty the oil industry was in public school. Yeah. We weren't taught about these, uh, you know. You know Upton Sinclair? I know the name. He wrote the, he wrote the, you probably know, you probably heard about the whole, uh, his, <clears throat> him exposing the meat industry. Maybe. He wrote uh, The Jungle, which is a novel about, like, exposing what was, how fucked up everything was in the meat packing industry in America in the early, uh, Early twentieth century. Uh-huh. He also wrote a book called Oil, which is what, which is what parts of There Will Be Blood is based on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, I mean, I, I get this about... Um... Okay, this is the thing I was, I was talking, telling you, part of the thread that pissed me off. Paul Thomas Anderson films remind me of that one thing where competing groups of kids each try to make a better secret language for their clubs, and one kid's like, ook, chaka, dlaka, and the rest of the club just nods along to prop up that one kid. What's that mean? I don't know, yeah, I don't understand that. Also, I don't get that feeling at all. <laughs> no. Are you saying that people are only like his movies out of sy- sy- sympathy? Because he's doing it. So like, oh, that's cute. Like, like don't don't make him feel bad, guys. Like, what? No, he makes good movies. I'm <laughs> sorry. Like, I don't think we're only pretending to like his movies. <laughs> I don't understand. Why would anybody do that? Why would only would people pretend to like movies? Yeah, I don't know. Other than, like, if a bunch of other people... It's weird, man. You've seen Coffee and Cigarettes, right? Uh, not really. Oh, really? No. Huh. You didn't see Coffee and Cigarettes. Alright. It's just a funny kind of thing. Uh, Wu Tang's in it with, uh, fucking, uh, Bill Murray. Alright. 
So this guy says, I once heard a film director describe him as a really talented director with absolutely nothing to say. I don't get the feeling that he has nothing to say, though. Yeah, I don't get that. And this but also, person, you don't have to say something to be a good director. I mean, it depends. Unless if you're working drama, you do have so you do have to have to say something to say. Or you can just like be a visual stylist. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you don't have to, you don't have to have anything to say if you're working in comedy because you can just make a really funny movie. Yeah. Because uh, you know. The Austin Powers isn't saying anything, but those movies are entertaining as all shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got a point. You don't have to have anything to say to make action, either. Yeah, no. You just set up bad, good guys beating the shit out of each other. That's all <clears> you <throat> yeah, need. Yeah, that's it. That's all you need. Uh, huh? What? I don't know. But what about uh? What if we novelized There Will Be Blood? As a novel? Yeah, like novelize it. Like, it's, it's does based that take on a novel. it away? It's based on a novel? It's uh, parts of it. Yeah, but like, what if the story of There Will Be Blood was put into a novel? Um, there was adapted into a novel. Would it be the same not getting it? Or is it because it's a like visual depiction of this type of character, which has been done before? I just don't Less think. using words, more using dialogue and... Who you knows know, why she doesn't like it, man? Ultimately, who knows? Yeah, we don't know her. We don't know what her personal biases are. We don't know what how how she views things, man. But also, like having a message and telling a story are two different things. Also, being the type of person about I was just thinking about something else. Mar Wilson um doesn't like come town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm bringing up come down again. Yeah. <laughs> He rolled you out. And I guess she subtweeted Nick once mm-hmm. because her friend of hers was dating Nick. That and she good. said, uh, she t- subtweeted saying, I'm at all of my beautiful friends dating podcasters that have shirts that have come on it. <laughs> That's fun. Or something like that. Yeah. With more words than that. Or. <sighs> But she was, so it was... It sounds like she doesn't get art. It sounds like she wants to be, like, spoon-fed shit. And not, like, feel or emote. Like, that's... uh, Like, yeah, you can use film medium as a way to say shit and portray a message. But you can also... I feel like that's other people more. I'm just wanted to talk about... Uh, There will be blood. She's trying to understand why she didn't like Paul Thomas Anderson. I don't think she's... I'm not gonna like say she's one of these Disney people. Martin Scorsese sucks because he doesn't like Disney movies. <laughs> Is it like you a? I'm just making up shit. To people hate him not on. getting art, huh? The whole like misunderstanding of art. Yeah, that's happening a lot right yeah. now. Yeah, because we're there's no media literacy. Yeah, nobody because we don't have film. We have movies, man. Can I We're read a this? culture built on movies. We're a culture built on, like, consumption. And, this, mo- like, shit made for consumption. Or this uh, part of the thread. Yeah. Okay. Uh, his films do lack a personal... This is in response to the producer who said he has nothing to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, his films do lack a personal feeling to them, but I think it's deliberate. He loves Robert Altman, after all. Uh, and Mara Wilson responded, See, but I fucking love Robert Altman. I feel like he clearly pays attention to all of his characters. I love big ensemble movies like his. Nashville was one of my favorites. I don't feel like I ever really get a sense of any of PTA's characters or why I should care about them. Like, she d- said she didn't like Magnolia earlier in the thread. Mm-hmm. But, and which is what makes me go, you didn't understand why you should care about some of the characters in Magnolia? It's not like they're all assholes. She said the only character she sympathized with in, the, in Magnolia was, uh, was uh what's his name stepbrother stepbrothers not will will ferrell oh john c Riley. yeah john c Riley's who was top in heart character. eight huh he's in heart eight yeah 
He's also in Boogie Nights. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, he's in his first three movies. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. He's a character actor, man, not just a comedy yeah, actor. Yeah, I, I just, I know him more as a comedy actor. Yeah. I would have never, you know, I got... Yeah. It, I didn't realize until years later that it's actually weird that he appeared, like, in the first season, in the f- first season of uh, Tim and Eric, that he was, like, yeah, super weird. down to play yeah. that weird-ass character for yeah, them. it is weird. But continue. Um... Said the only character she found sympathetic in Magnolia was the cop character played by John C. Riley, because mm-hmm. he was uh, a fumbly a fumbly cop. Uh, he, he he's not very good at being a cop. Yeah, he's a screw up. He loses his gun, and then cries in the rain. Mm-hmm. Uh, shit just goes wrong with him. He also falls in love with uh, the um. Coke uh, addict daughter of a, of a talk show host played by um, the the protect, uh what's the name I'm trying to find his name <coughs> like Philip Baker Hall uh, uh, who's a talk who's a game show host yeah. who may or may not have molested the Coke daughter Jesus she accuses him of it but we get we and he doesn't confirm nor deny it when she says it in the movie. Uh, it's, but he, but like there's a kid in the movie yeah. who's like a, who's forced to be on this game show, mm-hmm. the show that uh, Philip Baker Hall's character hosts yeah. by uh, his dad, who's just like, put, he's just a stage father, yeah. like pushing him. Yeah. It's clearly his dream. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was like, you don't get why why that character's sympathetic. And you don't get why the kid's sympathetic. Yeah. He's a child. Yeah. And he pees his pants in front of everybody. Like, that's yeah. that's in the movie. Like, oh, shit. You don't get... That character's not sympathetic to you? Yeah. That's fucking stupid. What, 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 you don't get why um, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman's character is... Uh, the Who's like the nurse to a dying... Uh, all right. I've probably explained this about a Magnolia before, but Magnolia is a movie where all the characters are connected yeah. in some way or yeah. another. Yeah, no, I got that. Phyllis Seymour Hoffman's character is the nurse to the dying producer of the game show that Phillips, that Philip Baker Hall's character hosts. Mm-hmm. His daughter is the co-kid. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah. I get that. Yeah. Goes on date with. All right. Yeah. Uh, I really just needed Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. As the nurse, and then who he was nursing. Yeah, is all I really needed. Yeah, and uh, he's kind of he's he's a completely sympathetic <laughs> character because I mean he cries mainly because the person he's taking care of is dying. Yeah, like a normal person. Would. Yeah, and he's not a bad person at all. You understand why that character would suck? It would suck to be that person. You mean? I mean, I understand why you probably wouldn't like um, uh, what's his name, Tom Cruise's character. Yeah, he's an asshole. Yeah, he's actively a misogynist the yeah. character's entire thing is that he's a misogynist yeah but there you're given reasons for why the characters act this way in the movie mm. like what does Patton do oh he uh uh he's like in a small part at the beginning oh really they're explaining uh how coincidence that link link uh p- different people not uh, the characters in the movie, but like different little iteration. different little uh, like urban store, urban uh, legends mm-hmm. that connect or connect to each other in coincidental ways. Okay, which kind of explains the, what we see over the course of the movie, which yeah, is story. Yeah. Yeah. All these different short stories that are all connected in yeah. in different little ways over the course of the film. Mm-hmm. Most people who I when I tell them Magnolia is one of my favorite movies, they they go, uh, I don't really get it. <laughs> wow. Well. Well, people, they say it's over long. <coughs> Which, again, yeah. he said it on WTF. He agreed. He's like, yeah, I would go back. If I could do one of that, I'd go back and probably cut. I was I was super young and kind of dumb. That's why I fought them to make the movie as long as it was. How long is it? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. 188 minutes. Yeah, it's, That's three hours and eight minutes, dog. Yeah, it's long as shit. That's long as shit. He said... He, How the fuck... How the fuck do you expect me to sit through that and not piss? Yeah. 
Dude, that scene where the kid pisses himself. I would probably piss myself. <laughs> out, of, out of the movie. Yeah, no, just out of having to piss already. Yep. Shit. Speaking of that, we're at two hours. Yeah. Um. I don't really know. You gonna call it? Yeah. We're gonna call it. Yeah. Call it. Your life. Your money. Your life. Oh, oh, you're flipping a coin? Yeah, I don't have any. <clears throat> uh, I do have change, but I don't want to pull it out. <laughs> Tails? I'm just using my hand, so okay. All right. <laughs> we're really doing nothing here. Anyways, this right. has been 2004 Podcast Odyssey. I'm Javon Gordon. I'm Bobby DeVore. Bye-bye. Farewell. Ta-ta. I beat us and I do. Yeah. <laughs>